Welcome back. They've become known as the Bow Counties. A look now at Green Bay. We're talking Brown, Outagamie, and Winnebago counties in northeast Wisconsin. A crucial path to victory in what will be a closely watched region election night. Marquette's final poll showing a toss up, a tie in the race for governor. In the Senate race, Republican Senator Ron Johnson leading Mandela Barnes 50 to 48 percent among likely voters. Poll director Charles Franklin now taking us inside this final poll. I heard you say turnout, turnout, turnout. I mean, is that what this is about? Yeah, it's, I feel sad saying it because everybody says turnout matters, but this right. is just the perfect example of turnout does matter. And remember, four years ago, we had the governor's race dead tied in our final poll, and Tony Evers won by 1.1 percentage point. Are there any undecided voters out there right now, or is this a matter of who is going to vote? There's very few undecided voters. There are some people that are disenchanted with both major party candidates, but those folks tend to be less likely to vote as well. So if they came in, they might shift things a little bit. Among the people who've said they're sure they're going to vote, very few people have not made up their minds. I've heard Republicans out on the campaign trail say Republicans are under polled, Republicans are yeah. under polled. If we're even or ahead, that means we're way ahead. Yeah. Is there data to suggest that? Well, it's, it's always a worry. Our sample is 2% more Republican than Democrat. And that's uh, actually one point more Republican than it has been over the last couple of years. So. Uh, you know, we're not seeing a sudden decline in Republicans as a part of our sample. Um, but especially with underestimating Trump's vote in 2016 by a fair bit, there's always a worry that you might be missing those folks. We do look to see if our response rates are lower in counties with high Trump votes and in this latest poll, as in all of them this year, we're seeing no relationship between response rate and how strongly the county supported Trump in 2020. But that's not proof that we aren't missing anybody. It just says the alarm hasn't gone off at this point. As the most prominent pollster in this battleground state, what do you watch for? What will you be watching for on election night? There's always the question of the suburbs around Milwaukee and how do they perform. They've been shifting a bit in a less Republican vote over the last decade. Do we see any of that shift back in a Republican direction given the candidates that we have this year? But I'm also watching the differences between smaller cities and even large towns through the state which have been trending a bit Democratic even as their more rural countrysides have been trending more Republican. So where does the balance fall in that? ABC News political director Rick Klein joins us from New York. Hey, Rick, really good to see you. Great to be with you. Let's start with the Senate race. 538's latest forecast says Johnson is favored. What are you seeing and what are you looking for in Wisconsin on election night? Yeah, I, I think it, at this point, um, the polls have been pretty consistent. We'll see if there's a a serious error. I think at this point it'd be a surprise if Ron Johnson doesn't win just because of the consistency in polling. You know, I'll have my eyes on turnout in Milwaukee uh, and of course the, uh, the the kind of margins in the wow counties, areas where Democrats um, have been more competitive than they have been in the past. Uh, you know, you know that uh, places like Madison are going to and Milwaukee are going to rack up big numbers for Mandela Barnes as they would any Democrat. But is he getting the kind of numbers he would need to outweigh Ron Johnson's strength elsewhere in the state? And as always, the suburbs come into play. I mean, that's really where the last couple of elections uh, have been determined. That's how Joe Biden was able to flip the state back to the blue column in 2020. Uh, and uh, we'll have to see if Mandela Barnes has that kind of a, of a turnout operation uh, and, and whether the, the, the suburbs that have been inundated by these ads, I don't have to tell your viewers about how much uh, advertising there's been, whether, they, whether they've whether they been influenced in their perceptions of, uh, of Barnes um, in, in, in Johnson's very searing ad campaign. Yeah, just a few television ads we've had here in the market in, in recent weeks. Let, let's broaden this out and talk about control of the U.S. Senate at stake. You've really been focusing on Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania in, in recent days. When we look at Wisconsin, we look at the broader image. How critical are those three states? Is that the path to victory for Republicans? I think if, look, whoever wins two out of those three states is going to control the Senate, period. 
Uh, I'm very convinced of that. And I think Pennsylvania is the best opportunity the Democrats have to flip a, a seat now held by Republicans. Nevada is the opposite, best opportunity for the Republicans to, 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 to flip something that's now held by Democrats. Um, and, and then Georgia, which was so close last time around, uh, could easily just be, be just as close. I don't have to tell you how divided the state is. When you look at the polling, the Senate race has a little more of a wider gap. The governor's race is much closer. Is that typical or is that unusual, especially in a state like Wisconsin? Yeah, it, it is. It's a little bit unusual, but I've got to tell you, I've seen it in a lot of states this year. Pennsylvania is a great example. I think the, the governor's race is you know much safer for the Democrats than the Senate race is. The, in Georgia, the, the governor's race is much safer for the Republicans than the Senate race is. So you are seeing split tickets. What's interesting to me, of course, is that Evers and Barnes ran as a ticket four years ago um, and won with relative comfort for Wisconsin uh, in a much better environment. Now they're, they're running um, for different offices uh, in a much worse environment. Uh, and running against an incumbent uh, is very hard. Evers running as the incumbent has a little bit of an advantage. But we are seeing this happen in, in a bunch of states. And I got to say, it is it is surprising to me still because this era of polarization where people seem to just vote on whatever party they affiliate with, uh, the fact that you're going to have a significant number of split tickets or people skipping votes, um, I think it could make the difference. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see Governor Evers win narrowly and Senator Johnson win narrowly on the same night. All right, here we are, the midterms just days away. ABC News political director Rick Klein. Hey, Rick, like always, thanks for your time. It's been my pleasure. Good to be with you. Coming up, the other big races. Stay with us.